So for those that follow our channel would remember, hopefully remember some time ago when we first moved into the region, we bought a couple of temporary hen houses made of really cheap tongue and groove uh, pine. And these have been pretty much uh, redundant now they've got their proper place in the barn. So we've got two left and I think with a bit of remodeling uh, we could make at least one of them and if it works the other one as well into a really attractive uh, pond side or lake side duck house with a ramp at the front. Uh, Thomas is there modeling that piece will go that extension would go um, and I quite like the idea of something in miniature like a like a Tudor house in miniature so Tom is now working out how we can take the roof off so um, I've brought it up to the workshop to get started and then realized that we're not going to be able to get it through the workshop door so I'm gonna have to work on it in the open and then perhaps pop it into uh, that barn there uh, during the night time thinking of doing I was thinking of doing something something almost a bit Tudor so I've decided to speed this up because it was far too long uh, for the video but this is just the sort of concept drawing of what we wanted so if you could imagine a sort of 17th century Tudor house uh, with quite a large upstairs uh, traditionally framed in the sort of black frame and plaster work which would have been sort of like a wattle and daub material and then a steeper pitch on the roof to what we've got with the chicken huts and that's all going to sit on a deck and that deck is going to protrude out onto the lake so to get to the back of it um, you can do so from the bank and then the deck goes out over the water um, and then in the front of the deck area there will be a ramp to get the ducks up and down onto the deck but the deck won't be wide enough for an animal a fox or another animal to get to them from the from the bank so the first thing we need to do is create this the uh, top section to come out from the rest of the base and I'm going to do that by creating an additional frame um, around the side that we want to bring out and then up as we go up into the roof pitch. Before I do that I just need to rip down some timbers because I've only got, this is what I'm going to use, but I've only got one section of this. We're now going to get the framing done on the second half, the top floor, if you like, of the duck house. And I'm going to increase the pitch of the roof slightly as well, because it's a bit flat at the moment, and that should give it a bit more, and make it a bit more of a feature. So uh, this bottom rail here um, will be the extent of how far out it projects. So now we need to come out and then go up, so it will be that fat uh, all the way on the second floor.
So what, what we're doing now is we're just building that frame there just to bring that first floor out, um, widen it. So we haven't put any of the detail on yet. Obviously, um, we're just doing the framing behind that elevation there. So all I need to do now, oh, thank you, Tom's coming up to join us, is there's the frame there. So we've got this frame here. So all I need to do now is turn it around and um, copy it the other end. But the other end is gonna be flat because um, this will be on the dry land. This side will be on the dry land. If you remember, it's gonna, it's gonna super fire out onto the lake so no critters can get in other than the ducks via the water. So this end here will remain flat um, and I'm gonna cut an access door in there last thing so Anna can get in and out and service it and get to the eggs and clean it up. So we're just going to turn it around and do do the elevation the same elevation as that on the back but not project it just flush with this. This is the side that we've done. It's the left-hand side looking forward. So that's this elevation. The hole in the middle there is gonna be the window, obviously. So I'll put a piece of perspex behind that and then somehow fake some leaded glass. Uh, and then the bottom section will be infilled. That hole will be infilled and then painted. So this needs to be, um, cause it would have been like a wattle and daub in the middle there. So I'm gonna recreate that with plaster. So I'm just gonna plaster, this is my whole test piece, this one. I'm just going to plaster that up, see how that looks like. I go along to my sections that I've cleared up. I should be able to find. I should be able to find the pot of plaster.
Here we go, we've got it, so let's go and get this done. I've given the uh, timber a little soaking, and hopefully, I mean this isn't going on thick anyway, hopefully that means this will stick. But as I say, this is gonna be, this is gonna be the test, this is gonna be the test one. Just needs to give a texture rather than anything else. Get some more out there. So what I'm gonna do guys, I'm gonna put this on time-lapse, So um, we'll let the plaster dry and then we'll gently rub down the wood. It looks, a, it looks like it's a bit of a mess, but I've deliberately gone over the joints just to, don't need to, but just if I've got the plaster there, might as well fill those joints and then gently sand the timber. Okay, so um, we've got this side and the same one the other side done this is the one that i've just done didn't film it because we already showed that to you before um, this one's had a night drying and i'm just debating whether this plaster is going to need some sort of paint i think just to help it resist the wetter the wet weather so i'm just putting some white on honey before this goes black before, the, before the white goes black <laughs> before the wood goes black <laughs> this is free paint this was here as well and it's all right i thought it had gone off so let me show you where we are now it's got that side is done that side there i've done the other side the same i've got the base of this one up it just needs all the woodwork and the plaster put on it um and then i'm going to do the bottom bit beef all that up i think i'll render that and then paint it maybe put a couple of windows in and then the roof which is going to be complicated I don't know how to do the roof i'd love to do a thatch roof but I don't know where you'd start to get the brushes from or whatever. The... Brushes? Well, you know. The... Oh, you mean straw? Yeah. The... Well, it's not straw, is it? Yeah, they use straw. For a thatch roof? Yeah. Do you reckon you could make a straw thatch roof? No idea. Mm. Uh, well, obviously, we'll make it watertight. We'll, we'll put a watertight membrane underneath, so whatever we put on top is just decorative. But... Um... They're going to have a really fun... If they don't use this, I should be most upset. I should go and live in it myself. <laughs> well, they're not going to go in it straight away because it's a new thing and they'll just think it's a monster to start with. So okay. it could be a month before they go in it. Do we have to put, like, bread inside it, like a bread trail? No, no, no. We put their usual, their bowl that they know. Yeah. Um, well, I've got loads of similar, haven't I? So I put their bowl with their food in. Keep putting yeah. it in there. Because jokes aside... The door access door on the back I'm going to make quite big. I reckon you could actually get in it. So what you're saying is you're kicking me out of the house and putting <laughs> me in there? Yeah, waterside property, your own deck. It's not really for the ducks. <laughs> you better choose your colours. <laughs> <laughs> what about Hope my you like white. Excuse me, what about my curtains? Oh, that I've, actually, I'm going to put some curtains in it, but I need you to help me with that. I don't know what material to put on. Flipping it needs to be neck. a small He pattern. has thought this through. He's even letting me choose my own curtains well, for this yeah, house he's putting yeah. me in. Tudor, baby. M mock Tudor Mansion. All right? It's not just any old house, is it? Waterside Mock Tudor Mansion. Mm. Well, I know I like old clothes, but I'm not wearing medieval. I don't think that no. suits me. No. I'd have to get a big f fluffy collar, wouldn't I, if I was going to go medieval? <laughs> 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 well, they call them rough. You'd look so funny with one of those. Yes. <laughs> Pushing it off. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just painting the white plaster. Just painting that in white. Um, and then once that's dried, we then go over in black and it'll look like that for the timber. That's its first coat of black on the timber frame there so it's really um that's upside down that one but it's it's starting to look like the side of a tudor house so this is the other side we've got the front to do um and then the base will just be a solid color so it's had its first coat of black 
and I'm going to need to go back in and touch up the white where there's been overpaint on the black and then the one on the left has had its first coat of white so um, I think I'm going to make a start on the front now so it's a little bit colder today actually there's a bitterly cold wind it's really strange weather we're having but um, we're getting back on with the duck house and today this is just up temporarily this side elevation today we're going to do this front fascia we're going to cut in some windows do the beaming and then if we've get time uh, I want to do the bottom floor the first floor so let's get cracking so I've marked out where the windows will go and where that front beam will cross this elevation so we've got two windows there um, if you remember there's a, a piece of timber that runs up the center there which I hadn't really thought through so I'm gonna have to cut around that or integrate that into the window frame so that will form the middle bar of the window frame let's get on with that now Okay, that's the window in. So I just need to put some netting behind it just to obscure the timber behind the window. Um, but that's fine. So we're going to get on with the beams on the front. But before I do that, I think I need to put the window... I need to put the window in, don't I? Take that off, put the window in, then put that back on, then put the beams on. So let's go on with that. Okay, just a quick update where we are. Um, this is the obviously the right-hand side of the front fascia. So all I'm going to do now is just put the plaster work in in the gaps and then bring that into the cottage to dry overnight. So today 
I need to duplicate that. That's all dried, painted and dried. Windows are in. So these are the windows in here, the curtains, the framing, get that first coat up. Uh, and then the second coat of black on, on, sorry, the first coat of black on the beams on here. Uh, and then I think we're on the roof and the first floor. Sorry, the ground floor. So both sides are done. This side is up, the other side needs to go on. Uh, this front right hand side is done. Uh, this left hand side needs paint and the black doing. So I'm just going to put some white on that now while it's warm out here and then get on with the rest of it. Uh, and then after we've got those up, I'm going to be just addressing these bottom details. They're going to have fake windows with closed shutters to save doing any more extra work on that the same on the other side and then on the front we're going to do a nicer entrance down here i was thinking bringing it in slightly and just putting a very slight arch onto it and then maybe a fake door that's been opened and folded flat onto there so that's what uh, that's what we're doing now Okay, it's starting to take shape now. We've just got the uh, the filler in just overnight, just to let that go off. Um, and then we've got the black beam in the center there to, uh, to paint tomorrow. Um, we've got the front elevation on the front here to do the archway door, the shuttered windows on the side, and obviously the roof. There we go.
So I'm just making the fake beams that come out the front. So this is the front elevation of the property and they would have had massive beams that supported the top floor. So you'd see those projecting out the front. Well, we're not gonna obviously have those beams, but I want to have the look. So um, got some square cut timber here, just gonna put a 45 degree chamfer on the, the front and it'll sit like that out the front. I'll show you in a second. So I'm just gonna knock a number of these up. So this is where they'll go, in black, just like that. Like that. So that's the front elevation pretty much done. Just got to wait for this uh, filler to dry, rub that down, put the doors on. The doors will be held open, permanently open, make it look like they've, they've just opened, but they'll be fixed. And then I was thinking maybe a small little fake window on either side, or maybe not. Uh, this is going to go white with a black, uh, a black frame, and these pillars, sorry, these beams are going to go black. Yeah, so onto the sides. So I put some stain on these doors and I'm just doing some fake um, straps. Struts. Well, for those with keen eye, you'll notice that that brace is wrong because <laughs> this is this is, this is the hinge line here, so the brace should have gone up there. But who's gonna worry? I don't think the ducks are gonna know. What I've gotta do now is put the roof units on. And I'm gonna use the ones off of the old chicken coop. Um, they're like a bitumen uh, material, so they're fine. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna make the roof watertight with the existing bitumen panels. So we need to do a, um, just an infill there, an infill there, and fix these properly. Um, and then I want to do a thatch roof effect, because it doesn't matter what I put on top, um, because it'll already be waterproof. And I've had a crazy idea that Charlie, our little beagle dog, has um, messed around um, with this rug that we had in the office. And it's a bit smelly, uh, but it's nylon and it's got a hessian back. So I'm wondering whether I can color that and use that as thatching, because as I say, it doesn't matter what I put on top, as long as that's waterproof to start with, even if water penetrates through the rug, uh, it's not going to get anywhere and maybe if the rug weathers maybe it'll look nice so i'm going to try that
So that's the door done. It doesn't need to look pretty because it won't be seen and I've hinged it up so Anna can get um, into the back of it okay without it hitting the ground. So guys, the good news is we're nearly done and actually this has been a long project, probably too long, I think. We've got other things to do, but we're very happy with it. The last thing I need to do now is just put a stain on the thatched roof, inverted commas, uh, to give it the appearance of a bit of wear. The duck house is going to get put in position on the lake. Charlie's helping. <laughs> You've got your helper, haven't you? Well, we've learned that um, he obviously went out a lot in the car. So whenever we start the car up, he always wants to jump in and help. <laughs> so, uh, he's laid down there. It's not wobbling yet. Brilliant. So we've just hinged a ramp that goes below the lower level of the, the lake and just put a couple of posts either side that are gone into the, into the lake bed. So that's kind of experimental. If they like it, we'll do something a little bit more permanent. And then we've got some uh, little cheap flowers we got from Action for Easter. They were a couple of euros for both sets. They're for kids things and a couple of um, imitation, um, I suppose they're imitation indoor plants, but they're great scale for big planters for this house. So that's what they're replicating. So the only thing we need to do now is introduce the ducks to it and to put some hay and some bedding inside to make it nice. 
and it's finished. So we've had a delivery. Yep. And then we need to check the duck house. Okay. There's some duck eggs. Yeah. Hang on. Oh wow. Super. So they're actually, all we now need them to do is to stay in there with them, don't we? You want, you want babies? Yeah, that would be lovely. Little ducklings going around the pot, uh, lake. <laughs> Thank you.